Hey Rayleigh and anyone else watching and welcome back to another message from your father. Plagues today. Eight of them. If you remember we were already looking at the first plague, the plague of blood, um, where Moses uh, used his staff and made all the waters of Egypt. Um, we're talking the Nile. Big deal. Changes all that water into blood. And what's crazier though is we also see in earthen pots and jars and all those vessels, those are turned to blood too. So we see something just absolutely extraordinary in that. And that's just the first plague. So that was uh, in previous chapters, I want to say that was in chapter 7. Uh, today, chapters 8 through 10, the plagues we're going to be looking at, uh, the plagues of frogs, gnats, flies, the plague on livestock, boils, hail, locusts, and, and darkness, excuse me. Um, so all of that is what we're going to see today. So um, there is a, a, um, a vengeance that God is pouring out on Egypt um, due to Pharaoh's pride and the treatment of God's people. So again, all of that in 8 through 10. And you'll have to forgive me, still fighting a bit of a cold there. So chapter 8. Seven days passed after the Lord struck the Nile. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to the Pharaoh and say to him, This is what the Lord says, Let my people go, so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will plague your whole country with frogs. The Nile will teem with frogs. They will come up into your palace and into your bedroom and into your bed, into the houses of your officials and on your people, and onto the, into your ovens and kneading troughs. The frogs will go up on you and your people and all your officials. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff over the streams and canals and ponds and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land. But the magicians did the same things by their secret arts. They also made frogs come up onto the land of Egypt. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Pray to the Lord to make the frogs go away from me and my people. And I will let your people go after, go offer sacrifices to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, I leave to you the honor of setting the time for me to pray for you and your officials and your people that you and your houses may be rid of the frogs, except for those that remain in the Nile. Tomorrow, Pharaoh said. Moses replied, it will be as you say, so that you may know that there was no one like, your, like the Lord our God. The frogs will leave you and your houses, your officials and your people, they will remain only in the Nile. After Moses left Pharaoh, Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs he had brought on Pharaoh, and the Lord did what Moses asked. The frogs died in the houses, in the courtyards, and in the fields. They were piled up into heaps, and the land reeked of them. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. Then, the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your hand and strike the dust of the ground, and throughout the land of Egypt, the dust will become gnats. They did this, and when Aaron stretched his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the ground, gnats came upon men and animals. All the dust throughout the land of Egypt became gnats, but when the magicians tried to produce gnats by their secret arts, they could not, and the gnats were on men and animals. The magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he would not listen, just as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning and come confront Pharaoh as, Pharaoh, excuse me, as he goes to the water, and say to him, This is what the Lord says, Let my people go, so that they may worship me. And if you do not let my people go, I will send swarms of flies on you and your officials, on your people and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians will be full of flies and even the ground where they are. But on that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen, where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there, so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. I will make a distinction between my people and your people. This miraculous sign will occur tomorrow. And the Lord did this. Dense swarms of flies poured into Pharaoh's palace and into the houses of his officials. And throughout Egypt, the land was ruined by the flies. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to your God here in the land. But Moses said, That would not be right. 
the sacrifices we offer the Lord our God would be detestable to the Egyptians. And if we offer sacrifices that are detestable in their eyes, will they not stone us? We must take a three-day journey into the desert to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God, as he commanded us. Pharaoh said, I will let you go to offer sacrifices to the Lord your God in the desert, but you must not go very far. Now, pray for me. Moses answered, As soon as I leave you, I will pray to the Lord, and tomorrow the flies will leave Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Only be sure that Pharaoh does not act deceitfully again by not letting the people go to offer sacrifices to the Lord. Then Moses left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord, and the Lord did what Moses asked. The flies left Pharaoh and his officials and his people, not a fly remained. But this time also, Pharaoh hardened his heart and would not let the people go. Chapter 9. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them back, the land of the Lord, the hand of the Lord will bring a terrible plague on your livestock in the field, on your horses and donkeys and camels, and on your cattle and sheep and goats. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and that of Egypt, so that no animal belonging to the Israelites will die. The Lord set a time and said, Tomorrow the Lord will do this in the land. And the next day the Lord did it. All the livestock of the Egyptians died, but not one animal belonging to the Israelites died. Pharaoh sent men to investigate and found that not even one of the animals of the Israelites had died, Yet, his heart was unyielding, and he would not let the people go. <laughs> then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from a furnace, and have Moses toss it into the air in the presence of Pharaoh. It will become a fine dust over the whole land of Egypt, and festering boils will break out on men and animals throughout the land. So they took soot from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. Moses tossed it into the air, and festering boils broke out on men and animals. The magicians could not stand before Mo Moses because of the boils that were on them and on all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said to Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning, confront Pharaoh and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says, Let my people go so that they may worship me. For this time I will send the full force of my plagues against you, and against your officials and your people, so that you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For by now, I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that would have wiped you off the earth. But I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. You still set yourself against my people and will not let them go. Therefore, at this time tomorrow, I will send the worst hailstorm that has ever fallen on Egypt from the day it was founded till now. Give an order now to bring your livestock and everything you have in the field to a place of shelter because the hail will fall on every man and animal that has not been brought in and is still out in the field and they will die. Those officials of Pharaoh who feared the word of the Lord hurried to bring their slaves and their livestock inside. But those who ignored the word of the Lord left their slaves and their livestock in the field. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand towards the sky, so that hail will fall all over Egypt, on the men and animals, and on everything growing in the fields of Egypt. When Moses stretched out his staff towards the sky, the Lord sent thunder and hail and lightning flashed down to the ground. So the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. Hail fell and lightning flashed back and forth. It was the worst storm in all of the land of Egypt since it had become a nation. Throughout Egypt, hail struck everything in the fields, both men and animals. It beat down everything growing in the fields and stripped every tree. The only place it did not hail was in the land of Goshen, where the Israelites were. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron. This time I have sinned, he said to him. The Lord is right, and I and my people are in the wrong. Pray to the Lord, for we have had enough thunder and hail. I will let you go. You don't have to stay any longer. <clears throat> Moses replied, When I have gone out of the city, I will spread out my hands in prayer to the Lord. The thunder will stop, and there will be no more hail. So you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But I know that you and your officials still do not fear the Lord God. The flax and barley were destroyed, since the barley had, headed, 
since the barley had headed and the flax was in bloom. The wheat and spelt, however, were not destroyed because they ripened later. Then Moses left Pharaoh and went out of the city. He spread his hands towards the Lord, and the thunder and hail stopped, and the rain no longer poured down on the land. When Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and thunder had stopped, he sinned again. He and his officials hardened their hearts, so Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he would not let the Israelites go, just as the Lord had said through Moses. <sighs> Excuse me. Chapter 10. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart, and the hearts of his officials, so that I may perform these miraculous signs of mine among them. And that you may tell your children, <coughs> excuse me, uh, tell your children and grandchildren how I dealt harshly with the Egyptians and how I performed my signs among them, and that you may know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says, how long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will bring locusts into your country tomorrow. They will cover the face of the ground so that it cannot be seen. They will devour what little that you have left after the hail, including every tree that is growing in your fields. They will fill your houses and those of all your officials and all the Egyptians, something neither your fathers nor your forefathers have ever seen from the day they settled in this land till now. Then Moses turned and left Pharaoh. Pharaoh's officials said to him, How long will this man be a snare to us? Let the people go so that they may not worship the Lord their so that they may worship the Lord their God. Do you not yet realize that Egypt is ruined? Then Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. Go, worship the Lord your God, he said. But just who will be going? Moses answered, We will go with our young and old, and with our sons and daughters, and with our flocks and herds, because we are to celebrate a festival to the Lord. Pharaoh said, The Lord be with you. If I let you, the Lord be with you, if I let you go along with your women and children, clearly you are bent on evil. No, have only the men go and worship the Lord, since that is what you have been asking for. Then Moses and Aaron were driven out of Pharaoh's presence. And the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over Egypt so that locusts will swarm over the land and devour everything growing in the fields, everything left by the hail. So Moses stretched out his staff over Egypt, and the Lord made an east wind blow across the land all that day and all that night. By morning, the wind had brought the locusts. They invaded all Egypt and settled down into every area of the country in great numbers. Never before had there been such a plague of locusts, nor will there ever be again. They covered all the ground until it was black. They devoured all that was left after the hail, everything growing in the fields and the fruit on the trees. Nothing green remained on the tree or plant in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now forgive my sin once more and pray to the Lord your God to take his deadly plague away from me. Moses, and Moses then left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord changed the wind to a very strong west wind, which caught up the locusts and carried them into the Red Sea. Not a locust was left anywhere in Egypt, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let the Israelites go. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sky so that darkness will be spread over Egypt, darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky, and total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. No one could see anyone else or leave his place for three days. Yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, Go, worship the Lord. Even your women and children may go with you. Only leave your flocks and herds behind. But Moses said, You must allow us to have sacrifices and burnt offerings to present to the Lord our God. Our livestock too must go with us. Not a hoof is to be left behind. We have to use some of them in worshiping the Lord our God. And until we, until we get there, we will not know what we are to use to worship the Lord. But the Lord hardened the Pharaoh's heart and he was not willing to let them go. Pharaoh said to Moses, get out of my sight. Make sure that you do not appear before me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Just as you say, Moses replied, I will never appear before you again. So this is really, really interesting. Just these, these eight plagues. So there are 10 plagues overall. So if you remember, we started yesterday uh, with the plague of blood. 
And before that, we even saw the miraculous sign of the serpent that um, God had allowed to appear out of Moses' staff. So we saw those kind of two precursors, but the one true first plague was that plague of blood. So that one being the first, and then today, these eight plagues that we've seen. And tomorrow we're going to see the, uh, the finale of the plagues and, uh, and what happens because of that. But it is interesting that this point we see with Pharaoh's officials where they say, just let the people go. Don't you see, Pharaoh? Egypt is ruined. This is everything that we have, our, our livestock and our crops and homes with this hail um, that is just so incredibly destructive. Um, it's ruined. The land is ruined. And yet Pharaoh has his heart hardened. And in fact, because he's made his decision, at least that's what it seems like, because he's made his decision, God says, okay, if that's your decision, I'm going to harden your heart even further. Because I know that no matter what I do with my plan here, you're not going to turn and relent. And I've raised you for this purpose, that I might be shown as great to my people because of this. And so that's really interesting. So we see this insane amount of pride that Pharaoh has, and he won't let go. And that's incredibly important. It's incredibly important. Uh, that's, that's my prayer for you. It's incredibly important to recognize the detriment that pride can do to you. I mean, I look at this and I think so many people are so prideful against God to say, who are you to do these things to people? Who are you to allow this stuff to happen? And I think it's so interesting. When I think about the gap between, between yourself and myself, uh, you are now um, 11 months old and I am 40. Uh, so I have 40 years on you. And that's crazy. And the, the, the gap in our knowledge is massive in 40 years. Now you're going to get smarter and you're already getting so much smarter incredibly quickly. Um, but the gap between us and God is infinitely larger, infinitely larger in wisdom, in power, in anything, any other metric. That gap is infinitely larger. And yet it's so easy to have so much pride and pride against God. So my prayer for you, Rayleigh, is humble your heart. When I go upstairs um, and you're behind the baby gate, um, you always reach up for me. And it is such a beautiful, incredible moment. And my prayer for you is that the older you get, you keep doing that. And it wouldn't make sense for you to keep doing it to me. Um, it'd be awesome, but it wouldn't make any sense. Um, but to have that heart for God and to always just prayer to be lifted up. God, let me be closer to you. Let me to be with you. And that takes a humility. So I'll be praying for that for you. Uh, know that I'm, again, praying for you, and I love you. And anyone else watching, know that I appreciate you as well. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.